Very cool. So, and the last point I want to make on this, this one is the increase of visible light increasing the welfare of the animal. And I, I last year I bought the LED jungle, uh, the, the Jungle Dawn LED bar, which you know. And at first I was just completely blown away and scared almost at how bright this thing was. Like I turned it on in my living room and I'm like, no, this is just too much. Like I can't, it was like illuminating the whole room and I couldn't believe that a light could be that bright. And now I'm totally used to it. I can't imagine not having it. But I, I just wanted to touch on, because I think for some people it'd be mystifying that if you add more visible light to an enclosure, you're actually going to be adding energy into the animal. Maybe you could quickly touch on that. Yes, well, the overall overarching point that we must make here all light is energy mm -hmm. because all light is photons and photons are energy they just carry a different color or wavelength or quantity of energy and impact the body in a different way and you know the, the work most of the work that i've been doing since about october last year um, and, and obviously going on, and it's going to go on for a long period of time yet, is actually trying to quantify the importance of visible light, what it actually does, and, and providing quantities of visible light. You know, we know, and we've known for a long period of time, that the lamps that we use in, in reptile care are a fraction of the brightness of natural daylight. A fraction. Yeah. And... Um, even though we have our heat, quantity of heat sorted out, and we're starting to sort out the spectrum of infrared as well, and of course we can now really accurately provide a, an accurate UV index, we're kind of getting really good at heat and UV and just starting to tickle the surface of the importance of visible light. And, and what that full spectrum between blue and red um, in the correct quantity actually does to life. Now, you, you, you know, there's millions of studies in all forms of animal care and human medicine that shows an increase in visible light is good for your brain. Otherwise, we wouldn't have things like sad lamps, you know, seasonal affective disorder, which is actually mostly to do with a vitamin D3 crash. But there is a, there is a, uh, a definite link towards lax quantity of light, how much light is coming in through the eyes and, 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 and in reptiles, we can actually say through the bone of the head, um, the, the, the activation of the pineal gland. Um, and uh, I just love the expressive term that Francis Baines used and continues to use over the years is that, yes, we must light up their brains. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, what. I really think there's a, an importance there. So one of the reasons that we worked for so long on this Jungle Dawn bar was to be able to create a, a diode that was full stretch, spectrum between blue and red without using separate blue and red diodes, but that would be able to force plant growth. You know, if, the, the main problem that reptile keepers have is that their live plants die off, and they die off because they're not being exposed to energy. PAR, photosynthetic active radiation. And if we look at photosynthetic active radiation, we are looking at the energy contained within the full spectrum of visible daylight. Now, if that energy is available and usable to a plant and omitting it from our vivaria causes those plants to die off through lack of energy, that energy all must then according to the theories of natural selection or development over time, however you want to describe it, must have an important interaction with all life. Mm. Yeah, no, I because totally agree. it is energy mm -hmm. and all energy is wasted, is used. None is wasted. Otherwise, we wouldn't have natural selection. So, so there is this importance of quantity of light which we can see through stimulating the eyes, stimulating the brain, stimulating the pineal gland for species that, that, that have that third eye, plus all the research that shows how important an increase of lux is, plus the fact that we know that our terraria is too dim, plus the fact that we know, because all light is made of photons and all photons are energy, that there is energy there to be used, therefore it must be used. So this creation of a lamp that allowed us to really 
really effectively grow plants suddenly started to see welfare ch and behavior changes in animals as well, typically um, in, in, in animals that show good coloration. They started to display higher levels of, levels of coloration. And we started to see really a lot, and not just in my collection, but a lot of feedback coming in from around the world where people saying, hey, I've just put your jungle dawn on. We've had it running a couple of weeks and my chameleon's choosing to bask under the LED and not the, not the heat lamp. You know, what do you know about that? Mm -hmm. Well, firstly, I knew nothing and I couldn't <laughs> understand it. You know, I was like, goodness, this doesn't, they're, they're obviously seeking out a bright light source, but why would they do that um, whilst emitting, being exposed to the correct wavelengths of infrared, which keeps them going? Well, there's energy there and it is impacting the body in some way. So we're kind of at the level now, and I have to be really honest, you know, there's a lot of people studying visible light and its importance. But for me, I really do feel um, at the stage with my research into visible light that I felt with 10 years ago when we first started talking about leopard geckos and UV. I think we're just starting to really scrape the surface. You know, you say the product's bright, and it's bright, um, and it's a nice flood, there's no dark spots, it's a nice colour, it works well, it's pleasing. We now understand it's full of energy. Um, what else can it do? Where, where will this lead us? You know, and, and should we be starting to look at the product in a way where well, actually this our enclosures have been too dim. Well, what kind of period of the day does this product allow us to, to simulate? And actually, I, I did the research into that. If you look at the lux levels of the um, most popular size of, of bar, which is the 18 and the 22 inch, um, if you look at the lux levels of those, when being used in sort of typical average enclosures, they're actually now starting to produce levels of visible daylight that are akin to mid-morning of natural sunlight. So we're nowhere near the brightness of full midday sun. Wow. But actually we're, we're, we're starting to get towards mid-morning, whereas we were actually in terms of lux, we were at somewhere like 5 o'clock in the morning or something, with even with T5s. Wow. So, so, so they're bright. And they feel really bright to start off with, but they're certainly not as bright as what the animals experience in the wild. Therefore, we still have a long way to go. Right. And I know that for me, the first thing I noticed was the color. It's, it, I have it in a giant day gecko enclosure and the green that I had never seen the greenness. I don't know if it was just the way the, the light was making her scales look different or over time she became healthier with the light, but it was just like night and day difference is this incredibly lime green color and it was just fascinating to see and like you said it's bright when you first turn it on but you get used to it and now i can't imagine like i can't imagine how dim it would look without it yeah it's horrible when you turn them off and just have the t5s yeah. or if you've still got if you've still got any t8s lying around and you think goodness oh, i must turn that back on but to answer your question it's actually a little bit of both the, the bright, the, the, the light is, is obviously bright, so it's enabling you to see. It's of a high color rendering index, so it's enabling you to see in the most natural way, so it being akin to the color of sunlight. Um, and we are finding an increase in the coloration of the animal, so it's not all of one. Um, the, the light is enabling you to see the animal in its most natural colors, but we also seems to be impacting the animal to provide those colors as well. Right. Yeah. Very fascinating. And the, the last thing I wanted to touch on light was, and I know your, what your answer is going to be here, but it, I think it's worth kind of exploring because I get this question a lot. You Supplying UV for fossorial species. So that you, I have people, you know, with the uh, sand boas or, or, you know, burrowing snakes that you don't see most of the day. And they always ask if they need to supply UV. So I assume the answer, or I know the answer is yes, but maybe you could 